Good evening, everybody. The last uh, text from us now, the yeah. last presentation of the day. We are talking about a bit strategic part, how to make IoT in the food value chain and how to do it practically. Yeah. So I start. Um, we at Bader, we are a machine builder. We are worldwide leader in food processing machinery. So we provide machines in fish and poultry business. So we are in the middle of these things, providing the machines to our customer, and our customers provide fish and poultry from the beginning of the value chain up to the end. So um, we are working with fish and also with poultry. And now we want to provide with data uh, to improve the whole chain from the very beginning up to the retail, to the end customer who eats the fish, who tastes it, and we want to share all this data with our customers to improve their process. So we add to our machine data we get from the IoT, um, also the product data of the products we uh, produce, and add it with the business case our customers need to have. So we run from a small fish with little data to the end of the process to a big fish and share also the information from the end to the beginning. Here you can see a case in the poultry business. So we did it also from the egg side um, up to the customer side in the end. So we want to collect all the data about the whole chain to provide it. Our approach at Bada uh, is to build one digital platform as a basic for the future, future solutions for the food value chain. So therefore we need strong business partners to support us, to get in touch with all the data, all the machine data, uh, to make sure that we can believe on the data, that it's secure, that we have a solution. Quick onboarding, with onboarding. scalability, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So everything what's uh, natural in software and IT industry, we want to bring in the um, machine industry. So also our approach or our strategy is to improve our customers, to get in touch with them with a strong partnership, to exchange what are their needs, uh, also with partners from our side, like Evosoft or Siemens. Um, we want to build up software developers in our business to make sure that they understand the processes and the software. And nothing about data, you listen to it all the day in all presentations. We also make big data in our business for also provide uh, transparency and uh, safety in food industry. Here in the chicken uh, example you see the whole value chain from the egg to over the farm to the transport to our processing uh, factories up to the plate. Uh, everyone is uh, part of this chain. So we add it with additional information not only from the machine data, I told it uh, one slide before, also the product and the business data so then we can um, present transparency along the whole chain. And therefore, we need Siemens MindSphere as a platform where we can provide all the I IoT information we get out of the machines and out of all the information our customer needs to have. So from the very beginning, from the farm side, all the steps before, from the feeding, the transport, also all conditional data like weather data, uh, humidity, and uh, oh, naturally the processing part because we are barter, so uh, this, our machine data, uh, the packing solutions up to the end users. So that you are able to put your information, like the taste of the fish or the poultry, is in your restaurant, you say, oh, it's tasty, so we can get the information and share it with the farmer. So he gets an indicator, was it good work? And I said it, we need a strong partnership with everybody, so we need here uh, the Siemens MindSphere to collect the data from the process, the factory, put all the product data and um, any other stuff like with IoT gates into the MindSphere and uh, get data back, like KPIs, uh, um, the yield or the temperature, is it okay? Uh, these are indicators for the veterinarian part, maybe, or the quality um, um, me measurements, so a process control. 
and therefore we get a lot of data out of out of this process. And now Pedram say, how can you help us <laughs> to make it better? Thank you very much, yeah. Sabrina. So, as she already said, um, you need a, a certain um, cross-cutting team. So, Bada did the right thing. Uh, they first mapped out the strategy and wanted to um, show what they want to achieve. They had this figured out. Only the process to deliver a software solution pretty easily to the customer and get first feedback, you can build it up yourself. That's, that's a little bit painful to make your first experiences. Or you can directly work with the solution partner of Mindsphere, which Evosoft is. So that's what Barter did. They approached us and they said, come on, can we work together and get the first minimum viable product in the hands of our customers? Get it to the uh, exhibition and get first feedback from the customers. So um, we have this process in the IoT field where we say, OK, you need a certain kind of cross-cutting team to deliver something like that real fast. Um, this is also an experience we made, because we come from an IT background. And in IT background, you only have like scrum teams, which is fine for IT projects. But for IoT projects, you need a little bit more. You need, of course, the cloud architects, data analysts. This is somehow the same thing in IT. But you already and also need an OT expert, which means like translating all these machine-specific terms and the interfaces and these kind of things, we bring that to the table too. So we can create a cross-cutting team um, and go to, for example, Bada and get the domain experts yeah. that tell us uh, how do chickens work chickens or, <laughs> yeah. or, or fish or what KPIs are important if I produce fish. I don't know that. I'm from the IT field. So <laughs> this is how we work together. And this is the important part. This is like a real key factor, success factor. Um, don't try to specify in a big document what you want and have someone develop it. Go in the team, the co-develop it, iterate on it. So we needed to learn from Bada what is important to them, what do they want. And we did that in workshops. We mapped it out. And the important thing is, don't drown in documentation. People always try to specify the last bit of it in the last freaking detail. And it will never be finished if you go like this. Define a very minimum thing. And don't try to make it overly fancy. We just painted it on the walls. We had a co-located workshop with Bada. We painted it. We sketched it out. And then we delivered a first um, visible thing after two weeks. So you can sit together and get feedback. Like, OK, I don't think this is going to work. You have to go in that direction, this direction. So this is more of an iterative approach. Um, because both sides have to learn in the IoT field, which is kind of new. Um, so that's what we did also with the UX validation. We created mockups, we created UIs, and um, we always had a runnable prototype. So we pitched it to Bada. They said, yes, it looks good. I can feel right at home. I can click through it. I can imagine how I can work with it in the field. I can imagine that this is of value to our customer. And if you do this week by week, every Friday there was a pitch, next Friday pitch, and always the um, let's say the, the um, feedback was incorporated into the next sprint. So this is how we work closely together. And an important part is also, don't try to implement the full system right away. Um, try to keep it as minimal as possible. In the first step, you can do some paper prototypes. You can really sketch it out like children um, and have people try it out and get the first feedback. In the next phase, um, create a clickable prototype, show it, validate it. And in the last step, create a native prototype, keep it minimum, and pitch it at the exhibitions. Take it to your exhibitions like we do it right now with Butter. You have a runnable prototype, so you can get the feedback from your customer. Not only the prototype. No, not only proto, even the <laughs> final solution, but take something with you. you. You should really time box the development to something like a month, six weeks, something like that. And um, define your own deadline to have something for the ex exhibition quick. And in this way, you can really get your feedback and really sharpen your vision. You need to have a vision. That's what they did. It's very broad. But pick one thing out of it and get it to the hands of the customer real quick. And Bada really understood that this is the way to go. And um, this is why I think you're quite fast in the market. Yeah. And 
I wish you all of luck in <laughs> distributing your new solution. Yeah. So if you want to have a look also from the prototype up to a real solution with real data from a customer side, you can uh, visit our booth. It's upstairs. So uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. So Bada and Evosoft, we're, uh, we're facing each other. If you, want to, if you have questions in detail, if you want to see how the projects work, we did a little bit more. Um, just approach us, and we can have a chat. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Sandra. So the last slide, <laughs> very important. We wanted uh, to make it sure that our customers are in the center. So working together with our customers to improve new horizons. Thank you very much. That's, yeah, thank you. <laughs>